this this first or this next slide here uh, uh, shows the data. Now, I, I collect this data from this is all published information from the American Cancer Society. Every year, uh, American Cancer Society comes out with their so-called statistics, cancer statistics, and anyone can uh, go back and um, and get these. Uh, Dr. Siegel uh, is the most recent person cataloging the number of cases and deaths per year. Um, and then to figure out deaths per day, you simply divide deaths per year by 365, and you have an estimate of um, how many people are dying each day from cancer. So th these are the numbers from 2013 to 2021. Um, and you can see there's a four point, uh, well, 12% increase in new cases, but also about a 4.6% increase in deaths per day and, and deaths per uh, year, which is parallel to the approximate increase in the population, US population size during these same, over the same period. So, so the bottom line here is that we're not making any major drop. Um, you know, it's, it's stagnating. Uh, you know, you hear about all this stuff and I'll talk about some of the stuff that we hear about on TV and all these kinds of things, all the great progress that we are making in keeping people alive longer, happier, and all this kind of stuff you hear advertised uh, on television. But when you look at, at the uh, statistics, um, we don't see that, okay? We don't see major drops. It's just a continual, gradual increase year in and year out. So, um, uh, and, and this is a paper that was published a couple of years ago uh, that evaluated all the drugs that have been FDA approved, 92 different drugs for cancer that have been approved from 2000 to 2016. Um, and, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, these novel cancer therapies, they are associated with uh, substantial tumor responses, but the median overall survival uh, was increased by only about 2.4 months. This is very interesting. So in other words, when you take these drugs, it looks like your tumor is responding, but your overall survival is not that greatly increased. And many of these drugs are extremely expensive. And um, not only are they associated with um, physical toxicities, but they can also be associated with uh, financial toxicity and trying to pay for them. Now, you wouldn't mind paying the money if, if you could get a substantial impact in quality of life and overall survival, but um, that's not the case. Are you passionate about the groundbreaking and heroic research of Dr. Thomas Seifert on metabolic therapy and cancer? So are we. That's why we've created something special for you, in collaboration with Johnny Rockermeyer, a German book publisher and translator. Introducing our collection of meticulously crafted books that distill the essence of Dr. Seyfried's work. Dive into the science and discoveries. These summary books are your gateway to understanding the intricate world of metabolic ketogenic therapy in a clear, concise, and engaging way. Whether you're new to the subject or a seasoned enthusiast, our books offer insights that can change your life. Ready to explore this transformative knowledge? Visit our website at www.cancerasametabolicdisease.com to get your copy. You can buy the ebook there directly and the paper book via the provided links. Here's the best part. A portion of every purchase goes directly to support Dr. Thomas Seyfried's groundbreaking research. That's why the direct ebook purchase is the best option to donate as much as possible. You can see all of the donations Mr. Rockermeyer has already made at www.ketoforcancer.net. That's right, when you buy our books, you're not just investing in your own knowledge, you're also contributing to the future of cancer research. Help us make a difference. Together, we can drive change and save lives. So the question we ask ourselves is, why are we not making the kind of progress in managing cancer that we should be making considering the enormous monies that have been devoted to this disease through not only federal research funding, but also through all of these private foundations. So uh, we'll, we'll address that. Um, you know, and, and here's, here's a paper that was published some years ago, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, hyperprogressive disease in patients with advanced non-small cell cancer 
treated with PD-1 slash PD-L1 inhibitors. The, the names of these you hear on TV, this is your uh, Updevo and Keytruda, uh, and these are the names of the, of the PD-1, PD-1 and PD-L1 drugs. Now it's interesting, um, there are some, and you can see the poor overall survival that you have here for uh, lung cancer. You know, you're up to 20 for two years is the most. You can see the patients start at 138, um, 138 patients, and you can see how fast they drop off. Um, now, the uh, standard of care, the toxic drugs that they use, um, you know, you don't get a really good long-term survival for, for lung cancer. But with um, uh, Opdivo and Keytruda, you, you can get some patients can, in fact, do, do well. Um, the majority of, pa of patients don't show any, any therapeutic benefit. But what's most disturbing is that there is a, about 15 to 16% of the patients treated with these drugs actually die much faster. Um, it's called hyperprogressive disease. And this is seen now, more and more papers are coming out, not only for lung cancer, but for, for a variety of different cancers. The treatments themselves accelerate the speed with which the patients die. And you don't, often don't hear that when, it, it, when these drugs are, are, are discussed. But anyway, this, there's a number of, this is a paper, you can read it. Uh, all the references are here from JAMA Oncology um, that discuss this. And there's many, many more papers that discuss this concept of hyper-progressive disease, right? So, so, um, now, what's the problem? Why are we not making any progress, major progress in cancer management? And that's because we have misunderstood the nature of, of what cancer actually is. So this paper we just recently published with my colleague, Dr. Christos Shinopoulos from Semmelweis University in Hungary, world expert on uh, mitochondria. Can the mitochondrial metabolic theory explain better the origin and management of cancer than can the somatic mutation theory. And I'm gonna, I'll be discussing these concepts uh, so that you have a clear idea about both uh, of, these, of these theories. So what causes a growth regulated normal cell to become a growth dysregulated cancer cell? So this uh, cartoon here of a, of a cell uh, shows you the organelles. This is the nucleus, uh, this, large section here, um, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, all these different organelles. But the organelle, the mitochondrion here, uh, this is a cross section. It's like a spaghetti network through the cytoplasm. This is the organelle, the mitochondrion, that's responsible for the generation of most of the energy in our cells. Uh, we breathe air, uh, we get what we call oxidative respiration, and the, uh, and the oxygen in the air that we breathe uh, serves as a, an acceptor of electrons to generate ATP, uh, adenosine triphosphate, which is the gold currency for energy. Without ATP, nothing in our lives, in our brain, in our, any of our organs can work. Without ATP, and ATP is life, ATP is energy. Without ATP, nothing can grow. So the ATP in our cells is largely produced in this uh, organelle, the mitochondria. Mitochondrial respiratory damage is the origin of cancer, and I'll present the evidence for this. So the, uh, 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 what happens, this organelle, and I'll show you how it can become damaged, and once it becomes damaged, it releases these reactive radicals that cause the mutations in the nucleus. So the somatic DNA mutations and most other abnormalities seen in cancer cells are downstream effects of mitochondrial respiratory damage. So the mutations and the cancer, and I'll show you why cancer is not a genetic disease. All of these mutations that people seem to focus on um, are all downstream effects. They're not the cause, they're the effects. The cause of cancer is a mitochondrial disruption of oxidative phosphorylation, respiration. They, mutations are effects, not causes. This is, this is underlies the, the reason why we're not make, making any major advances in cancer, because the field focuses on mutations. And if you focus on a downstream effect as, as, as your primary attention, you're not going to make the advances that you should make. And I'll show you the evidence for that. Mm -hmm.